The work and procedures shown and described in this video are intended for people having a fundamental understanding and familiarity with the subject presented. Every possible circumstance that might involve potential hazard could not have been anticipated in the production of this program. The warnings and safety suggestions in this video are not inclusive of every situation. You must satisfy yourself that the operations and procedures you use in your situation are safe for you and the people around you. Before operating any equipment, review the machine owner manual and become completely familiar with the controls and safety procedures for that particular machine. The producers of this video disclaim any liability for injury or damage arising out of attempts to perform the work and procedures shown and described in this video. If other materials are used, such as fuels, lubricants, cleaners, or chemicals, precautions for handling should be obtained from container labeling. This program is not a substitute for the owner or operator manual supplied with the machine. Remember, as always, consult your supervisor if you have any questions when operating equipment. In the rules of golf, a bunker is defined as a hazard consisting of a prepared area of ground, often hollow, from which turf or soil has been removed and replaced with sand. Golf course architects strategically place sand bunkers on a golf course to add beauty to the design, as well as an added challenge to the round of golf. The famous golf course architect Donald Ross wrote, our aim is a variety of bunkering that will multiply the interest of the game. Therefore, bunkers can be found in many shapes and forms. Because of the difficulty and skill required to hit a ball from a bunker, golfers demand consistent and predictable playing surfaces from one hole to the next upon the same golf course. Incorrectly maintained bunkers have a greater chance of providing the golfer with an undesirable lie, such as a ball buried in the sand called a fried egg hung up on the lip or against debris in the bunker. Therefore, a properly maintained bunker is an important task in golf course maintenance, providing a smooth surface, free of any mounds or holes, and consistent sand depth gives the golfers the most control over the outcome of their shot. Additionally, if golfers play from a well-maintained bunker, they are more likely to take the time to return the sand to the pristine condition in which they found it. Although bunkers represent a very small portion of the total golf course playing area, they are a unique part of golf course design and playing strategy. Just like a well-kept green, the maintenance of a bunker reflects the professionalism of the green staff. Thus, proper maintenance is very important. While this program is designed to provide a basic understanding of bunker maintenance procedures, your supervisor will instruct you on the specific responsibilities and procedures followed on your golf course. Bunkers are raked either with mechanical rakes or with hand rakes. Some clubs choose to hand rake all of their bunkers. Others use a mechanical rake. Some bunkers are designed with steep faces, called flashings. Some are narrow, and some are too small to be maintained with a mechanical rake. In these cases, a hand rake must be used. We'll discuss mechanical raking first. In bunkers where they can be used effectively, mechanical rakes require less labor, and if operated correctly, they will provide good playing conditions. There are two basic types of mechanical bunker rakes. On one, the operator manually lowers and raises the rear rake attachment. On the other, a hydraulic lift system lowers and raises the rake. As always, before leaving the maintenance facility, perform all the pre-start procedures as directed by a supervisor. This generally includes an overall visual inspection of the mechanical rake to look for any obvious damage or leaks checking the engine oil and hydraulic fluid, and checking the tire pressure. When heading out to your assigned bunkers, always pay attention to avoid disturbing golfers who might be playing. Upon arriving at the bunker, bring the machine to a complete stop on a level surface. 
If the machine is not a hydrostatic drive unit, set the parking brake. First, visually inspect the bunker. Any debris, such as pine cones, pine needles, leaves, sticks, and so forth, should be removed. These should be removed prior to raking the bunker so that the rake does not drag them through the sand, resulting in an inconsistent surface. Do not leave debris next to the bunker. Place in a bucket or a cart to dispose of later in the designated area. If hand rakes are left in the bunker for golfer use, they should also be removed at this time. Also, make a mental note if there are any damaged rakes or if they are in poor condition. This information should be relayed to a supervisor as soon as possible. Use caution. Broken rake handles can cause injuries. Take a minute to pull any weeds that are in the bunker. Finally, level out any extreme holes or piles of sand left behind by golfers. One quick pass with the rake from the bunker upside down should do the trick. Once the bunker preparation is complete, start the machine and drive into the bunker. The point of entry and exit should be changed each time so that a path is not worn into the turf. After carefully entering the bunker, lower the rear rake attachment. Some bunkers are designed with steep faces and surrounds, and they can pose a risk to an operator trying to enter or exit from those steep slopes. Avoid these dangerous areas and enter from a safe location. Drive the bunker rake with the rakes in the lowered position around the bunker in a circular overlapping pattern. Usually, a circular or overlapping figure eight pattern is followed. Pay close attention not to miss any areas. Misses or skips will result in an inconsistent playing surface. Various patterns may be used, depending on the size of the bunker, to avoid creating waves or displacing the sand to one area of the bunker. The mechanical bunker rake should be driven slowly and smoothly, avoiding any sharp turns. Sharp turns will result in a mound of sand or a rut left by the tire of the machine, creating the potential for an uneven or bad lie for the golfer. The rear rake attachment should be kept several inches away from the lip of the bunker, so it will not damage the turf or the machine. Many bunkers are constructed with a system of gravel drainage lines and or woven liners underneath the sand. The rake attachment should not be allowed to dig in too deeply. Rakes that are set too low can tear the liner or stir gravel up to the surface. Maintenance employees must take responsibility for reporting to their supervisors any irregularities they see, such as gravel from drainage lines. Once the bunker has been raked, make one final pass around the perimeter, avoiding the edges as an exit pass. When possible, exit the bunker in a different place each time to prevent wear patterns from developing. Prior to exiting the bunker, lift the rear rake attachment. If any sand remains on the rake after it has been lifted, lower and raise the rake until the sand is shaken loose. After exiting the bunker and driving on the turf for a few feet, check behind the vehicle to see if any sand has been transported onto the grass by the machine. If it has, use a rake to remove the sand from the turf. Smooth out any mounds of sand left in the bunker by this process. The final step is raking the edges of the bunker by hand, generally using a leaf rake. Metal leaf rakes are excellent for smoothing the bunker surface because they produce smoother furrows and firmer sand compared to other rakes. Sand on the surface of the bunker tends to work downward into the base because of rain, irrigation, wind, and golfer activity. Downward migration of the sand eventually results in a thin face and excess sand in the bunker base. Therefore, the sand is usually pulled upward when hand raking the edges. When raking the sand in an upward motion, be careful not to pull excess sand onto the turf grass surrounding the bunker. Create a neat and consistent look around the perimeter of the bunker by raking equal length strokes. Many greenside bunkers have a lip on the edge next to the green to prevent golfers from putting out of the bunker and onto the green, so continually raking the edges upward could effectively eliminate the lip. If this occurs, the edges should be raked in a downward motion from inside the bunker. Since you would be walking on the sand inside the bunker to do this procedure, it should be done prior to raking the rest of the bunker. 
Some golf courses alternate the days, raking up one day and down the next, keeping a consistent amount of sand around the edges of the bunker. The procedure for the edge not adjacent to the green is different than the greenside edge. When raking the edges on the side away from the line of play, the sand should be pulled up, even with the turf. A lip on the rear of the bunker can result in a difficult and unacceptable lie for the golfer should the ball come to rest near the back edge of the bunker. As you rake the edges, pull any weeds that are around the bunker edge. Use caution when raking steep bunker slopes. These edges are not as stable, and stepping on the edge may cause it to break away. Also, make sure you have returned all the rakes to their correct locations, as instructed by your supervisor. Be sure that there are enough rakes in the bunker. Your supervisor should determine how many are necessary, depending upon the size of the bunker and facility preferences. Some golf courses prefer to have all bunkers raked by hand. Therefore, we will now see how to hand rake bunkers. Typically, metal leaf rakes are used to produce smoother furrows and firmer sand compared to other rakes. Your club may choose a different type of rake, depending on the golfer's preferences or the sand type. Your supervisor will show you what type of rake is used at your golf course. When heading out to your assigned bunkers, always pay attention to avoid disturbing golfers who might be playing. First, visually inspect the bunker. Any debris such as pine cones, pine needles, leaves, sticks, and so forth should be removed prior to raking the bunker. These should be removed prior to raking the bunker so that the rake does not drag them through the sand, resulting in an inconsistent surface. Do not leave debris next to the bunker. Place in your cart to dispose of later in the designated area. If hand rakes are left in the bunker for golfer use, they should also be removed at this time. Also, make a mental note if there are any damaged rakes or if they are in poor condition. This information should be relayed to a supervisor as soon as possible. Take a minute to pull any weeds that are in the bunker. Finally, level out any extreme holes or piles of sand left behind by golfers. One quick pass with the rake from the bunker upside down should do the trick. To hand rake, start at one end of the bunker and lightly drag the rake behind you as you walk straight across the bunker, leaving a smooth surface in a straight path. Continue back and forth across the bunker, overlapping the previous stroke and walking in the unraked side of the strokes. Often, the direction of this pattern is rotated daily to avoid leaving any undulations or waves in the bunker. Your supervisor will tell you of any preferences with respect to raking direction. Hand raking should be performed slowly and smoothly, as rapid movements can leave vertical waves in the sand as well. The rake should be moved gently across the surface, not digging too deep to prevent excessive sand from being moved from one area to another. As an alternative hand raking method, use short forward strokes in the sand as you move laterally to the left or right. Take care to push the sand evenly with each stroke, not leaving any ridges and overlapping the previous stroke. Work backward through the bunker, raking your footprints until the whole bunker is raked. When all of the sand in the base of the bunker has been raked, the edges should be raked. Sand on the face of the bunker tends to work downward into the base because of rain, irrigation, wind, and golfer activity. Downward migration of the sand eventually results in a thin face and excess sand in the bunker base. Therefore, the sand is usually pulled upward when the operator is hand raking the edges. When raking the sand in an upward motion, be careful not to pull excess sand onto the turf grass surrounding the bunker. Create a neat and consistent look around the perimeter of the bunker by raking equal length strokes. Many greenside bunkers have a lip on the edge next to the green to prevent golfers from putting out of the bunker and onto the green, so continually raking the edges upward could effectively eliminate the lip. If this occurs, the edges should be raked in a downward motion from inside the bunker. Since you would be walking on the sand inside the bunker to do this procedure, it should be done prior to the raking of the bunker. Some golf courses alternate the days, raking up one day and down the next.
keeping a consistent amount of sand around the edges of the bunker. The procedure for the edge not adjacent to the green is different than the green side edge. When raking the edges on the side away from the line of play, the sand should be pulled up, even with the turf. A lip on the rear of the bunker can result in a difficult and unacceptable lie for the golfer, should the ball come to rest near the back edge of the bunker. As you rake the edges, pull any weeds that are around the bunker edge. Use caution when raking steep bunker slopes. These edges are not as stable, and stepping on the edge may cause it to break away. Also, make sure you have returned all the rakes to their correct locations, as instructed by your supervisor. Be sure that there are enough rakes in the bunker. Your supervisor should determine how many are necessary, depending upon the size of the bunker and facility preferences. Whether you rake the bunkers mechanically or by hand, there are times it will be necessary to relocate sand within the bunker. We'll take a look at that now. Bunker faces often need sand relocation maintenance because of their comparatively steep slopes. Depending upon the amount of rainfall, wind displacement, irrigation, raking, and golfer activity, sand relocation may be required periodically. This procedure may also be immediately necessary after heavy rainfalls. This is often done using a front push blade on a mechanical bunker rake or by shoveling sand from the base of the bunker back up to the face. If there is soil on top of the sand, lightly skim the soil off of the sand with a flat bladed shovel and haul to an appropriate location. Removing this contamination will keep the sand clean and reduce blocking the drainage underneath the sand. Check the depth of the sand. Sand depth should be consistent depth throughout the bunker, typically 4 to 6 inches in the base and 2 to 3 inches in the steep slopes. Check with your supervisor to determine your course's preferred depths. Firmly tamp down the sand on the face to prevent golf balls from becoming embedded there. Be sure that the surface is smooth and even throughout the entire bunker. When bunker depth is even, Rake the whole bunker as you would for everyday maintenance and replace the rakes. Due to contamination, wind displacement, removal during edging, and golfer shots, there may not be enough sand available to relocate. When this occurs, additional sand will be needed. Fresh sand should be added whenever the depth of the bunker decreases below 4 to 6 inches through the base and 2 to 3 inches on steep faces. Be sure the sand is comparable, if not identical, in shape, color, composition, purity, and particle size distribution to the existing sand. Sand replacement is best done during a time of year when there is minimal play to give the new sand time to settle. Add enough sand to reach the desired depth through the base of the bunker. If unloading sand into the bunker with a dump box cart, use caution not to destroy the edges of the bunker with the cart while getting close enough that the sand is dumped into the bunker and not on the grass. Use shovels or the blade on the front of the bunker rake to push the sand to the desired location within the bunker. Soaking the sand through irrigation helps to settle and firm the bunker but a vibratory compactor or hand tamper may be used to instantly firm the sand. When the desired depth is reached, rake the bunker as you would for everyday play and replace the bunker rakes. Besides relocating or replacing sand, bunkers require periodic edging to maintain the size, shape, and appearance. Grass grows well in sand, so the encroachment of the turf surrounds into the bunkers can be a continuous problem. Therefore, a regimen of bunker edging is an essential part of routine maintenance practices. Depending upon the course and the bunker location, the edges may be trimmed infrequently or they may be trimmed more often to keep close and sharp edges. Without edging, the shape of the bunker can be lost changing and possibly damaging the golf course architect's design. Even bunkers designed to have a natural look to the edges need to have their shapes maintained. Bunkers can be edged with a straight blade manual spade or sod knife, 
but for minimal soil disruption, use mechanical edging tools. Because mechanical edgers are specifically designed for this job, this is often the safest and most efficient method for edging bunkers. As with all power tools, the operator should consult the manual before using. String trimmers can be used for horizontal turf grass edging, but they are not recommended for vertical edging. Avoid soil removal, which can contaminate the sand and change the original shape of the bunker. Clean out any debris left behind, rake the bunker as you would for everyday play, and replace the bunker rakes. Some superintendents may like to apply chemical growth regulators to the bunker surrounds in order to control growth into the sand. This is a very specific treatment, requiring the right chemicals, applied at very precise rates. Your superintendent will provide the proper education and training in this procedure. When the golf course is closed for the winter season or a golf course renovation project, the bunker's maintenance may be neglected for a period of time. At these times, the bunkers may need some extra preparation before normal raking and maintenance can resume. First, clean out any debris in the bunker using backpack blowers and rakes. Haul this material away to the appropriate location. If needed, take the time to redefine the bunker edges. Use methods previously shown. Also, sand may have settled to the lowest section of the bunker. Check the depth of the entire bunker and use the sand relocation or sand replacement methods previously discussed. Because the sand may have settled and hardened due to the lack of routine maintenance, you may need to use a garden rake to loosen the top one to two inches of sand before raking the bunker. Next, rake the entire bunker as previously shown. If the bunker is not consistent and smooth after the first raking, you may have to rake the bunker twice. Finally, make sure you have placed all rakes in their correct locations as instructed by your supervisor. This training program is designed to provide general information and guidelines relating to bunker maintenance. Methods will vary from golf course to golf course. Always get clear directions from your supervisor before beginning any task.